the keto diet is without a doubt the most popular out of any recent dietary trend, even more than the vegan cult. And for a good reason. There are so many anecdotal reports and miracle weight loss stories of people following this high fat diet. But at what cost? You don't hear about how vibrant and healthy people look and feel from being keto. In fact, it's the opposite. They don't feel good, but hey, they're losing weight. With my more recent understanding of liver damage and the fact that the majority of people in general have some degree of it due to poor conventional dietary wisdom, it's very apparent that the side effects and symptoms of ketosis when you follow a keto diet are identical to the side effects or symptoms of liver damage. To put it simply, the keto diet destroys your liver so you can't really digest food anymore and you lose a lot of weight at the expense of your health, long-term liver damage. Any sort of dietitian, nutritionist, doctor recommending a keto diet doesn't have a good understanding of the metabolic and biochemistry aspects related to organ function. If they did, they wouldn't touch the keto diet. They wouldn't even consider it. And the first sort of flag is it has a pretty low recognition for disease healing. You know, sometimes people bring up epilepsy, but even compared to like the carnivore diet, you know, people aren't fixing their health problems. The first symptom we have is the keto flu, which is described as fatigue, headaches, and trouble focusing. All of these symptoms start almost immediately when people start keto diets because it's the perfect storm of a diet to impair liver function. High fat and protein without carbohydrates, even if some fiber is present, even if you're consuming a ton of vegetables, is just going to cause extreme liver detox and reabsorption. With that much saturated fat, the liver and gallbladder are going to overdrive, excreting bile, just constantly pumping it out. And the bile is full of liver toxins from past diet and lifestyle and should be excreted in the bowel movement. But because the keto diet is so high in fat, which promotes reabsorption of both nutrients and toxins, they enter back immediately into the bloodstream, causing toxicity ailments. So this might go away, it might not go away, depending on the person's meal timing. If you're consuming enough high fat meals frequently, the liver will never get a chance to detox and it'll be in this like constant absorption state. And then it could take months or years before the liver gets full of toxins and nutrients, completely overloaded, which is when your health really starts to fall apart. So the liver will try to detox, you know, before it's at full capacity. It's gonna try to do that. It's gonna try to remove any toxins at any point in time, but it, it can still store more toxins if it has to. Problem with the keto diet, it's not giving the liver a chance to rest. Next up is keto breath or acetone breath, which is said to be uh, the ketones in your body that are being produced by the liver, the fat sources for energy, turned into acetone. And I think this is some form of the liver trying to detox kind of unsuccessfully because not everyone gets this. And when I was keto on the carnivore diet, I never had anything close to this, probably because the amount of toxins on the carnivore diet is very low and cannot be excreted in that form. And this is the main question to ask about this. Is this a form of your liver trying to release toxins in the fats? which on one hand is good because your liver isn't damaged to the point where it isn't labeled to detox, but on the other hand, at the point of extreme liver toxicity, whether it's agrochemicals, metals, or even vitamins overloading the liver, I don't think keto breath is going to be present. And you have to keep in mind that the body has many different ways of excreting toxins, but most are not effective enough to reverse all of the toxins in our modern world. And yeah, the liver will put different toxic metabolites in fat, but if it's just gonna be reabsorbed and can't be pushed out of the body, it doesn't matter. Then we have smelly urine, and quoted from a ketosis guide, filmy consistency smelling like dinosaur sweat and gym socks. <laughs> Either way you spin these symptoms, it can't be good. Red flag on top of red flag, that's obviously slow detox, dehydration because you know, your urine is one of the main ways your body excretes stuff, but if it constantly smells like that, 
then at some point, you know, you're not getting things out. Digestive issues, another really big red flag. Constipation or diarrhea are almost always present on the keto diet and immediately brushed under the rug as normal. If you're constipated, you're hyperabsorbing nutrients as well as toxins. And the reason for diarrhea is that the bile is so toxic and acidic and caustic, it will just flush your digestive system 24 seven. You can look and read on any ketosis form. These symptoms don't just go away after two or three weeks. Most people are suffering through these very obvious indicators of liver and other types of organ damage from this crazy diet. And part of that is because the lifestyle they followed before the keto diet was toxic, it was bad, and keto isn't detoxing and resetting their bodies before they get into this. Changes in menstruation, anytime fertility becomes compromised, it's a great indicator the diet is not healthy for humans. There is no such thing as a temporary detox. Months of not having a period is nothing close to normal. If the diet was actually healthy for you, it could be followed without destroying your fertility. And I think uh, Vegetable Police made a video about keto eyes and how many people have drawn dark sunken under eye bags. And it's probably just from the insomnia that most people experience when following these low carb diets. The liver is hyper absorbing nutrients, minerals, calcium especially, which causes hyperactivity in the brain. Uh, I mean, it's called hypercalcemia. It's very, very common in the medical literature, but people don't really talk about it too much. So, you know, just removing dairy or high sources of calcium from the diet can kind of help on that end, but you shouldn't be following a keto diet ever under any circumstance. Ideas like paleo, vegan, ketosis are simple and usually affordable enough to convince people to try to jump right in. And the reality of sourcing high quality organic food, cooking every meal, reducing radiation, spending hundreds of dollars a year on clean water, hours every week grounding and exercising is above and beyond the easy choice of having bacon and eggs for breakfast every day claiming you're healthy. I mean, on top of all of that, the information isn't easily accessible and there's many different components outside of diet that uh, really need to be fixed in most people's lifestyle. So uh, hopefully uh, this gives you guys a pretty good understanding of why I'm kind of against the keto diet. And I, I think I've spoken about uh, the carnivore diet in this context to some degree, what issues it has, although it's probably better than keto and also just an overview of ketosis in general if you guys want to search my channel for those videos but as always please drop a like on the video leave a comment down below subscribe so that youtube can unsubscribe you next week and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos therefore you can support me on frank stefanocom uh, we have the beef glands available now on frankie strange me like adrenals and uh, we do have <laughs> our new vegan cookies available on frankiesrangefoods.com. So two pretty cool products this week, guys. Check it out. Everything frank-defile.com. I'll see you guys for the next video.